right. Uh, welcome. Today is art history. I'm Becca and we're going to talk about Greek art and we're going to make some uh, pictures of Greek pottery and talk about Greek pottery. Um, if you have your art supplies ready to go, that's great. You should have a piece of paper. I've got a whole notepad here and some colored pencils, just some regular pencils, um, markers. Um, really all you need is black, but if you have other colors, that's fine too. Um, those are your supplies. If you don't have them to get together yet, go ahead and get some paper, some markers, some pencils, um, and we will be talking about Greek art. Um, let's see, I think we've got, oh good, we've got, people are logging on. There are students, this is exciting. Um, hi, Aubrey, Dylan, Elaine, Ellie, Ethan, welcome to the class. We're going to have a fun time today, I hope. Oh, some new names that I've never seen before. Hi, James, Henry, uh, Jane, Leah, Luca, Madeline, Maya, Milo, Mimi, Oliver, Sophia, welcome, welcome. Okay, so just a reminder, um, if you want to ask me a question or just say hello, um, you can use the Q&A box and chat with me there. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of pictures. I'm going to show you some pictures and then I am going to um, talk more about pottery and then we are going to draw some pottery designs and design some um, pictures and storytelling on paper. Uh, we're not actually going to make pots. Um, it seemed kind of hard to figure out setting up a pottery studio in your house. Uh, we'll try that next time maybe. Um, all right, good. Hello, hello. Um, are you? <laughs> okay, good. So we've got a pretty good class here. And so let's go ahead and get started. So again, we're going to be talking about art history. And specifically, we're talking about Greek art. And um, but before we do that, I think we need to talk about the Greeks and who they were a little bit and kind of understand a little bit about them so that we can understand more about the type of art that they made. Uh, so I am going to open up my pictures that I prepared and um, let's see. So let's talk about Greece. So Greece is a southern, southeastern part of Europe. Um, you can see it here on the big global map. And then you can see a close up on the right hand side where you can see the whole, um, whole country at the time of ancient Greece. And you can see there's a lot of islands. This is like an island people. Um, they were travelers, they went a lot of places on boats, which makes sense because of all the little islands that they lived on with boats. Um, they were explorers, they were farmers, they were soldiers, they were politicians, they were big philosophers and thinkers. Um, and important to us today, they were artists. So this is Greece. And then another big thing we need to know about them is they believed that the world was created and run by these superhumans known as the Olympians. They were 12 gods. And for those of you who have read the Percy Jackson books, um, you probably know a little bit about the Greek gods maybe, um, or maybe you've studied them in school. So these are the Greek gods. These are the first ones. These are all brothers and sisters. So this is Zeus. He's the king of the god, the god of the sky, rain, and lightning. And then there's Hera, the goddess of marriage, Hades, the god of the underworld, Poseidon, the god of the sea, and Hestia, goddess of the home. So when they were trying to explain why things happened, 
um, they explained them with gods and goddesses. They believed that these gods and goddesses controlled and they were like these superhuman beings um, that were giant and made things happen in the world. So, um, and then Zeus, the king of the gods, had a bunch of children. And so his children were Artemis, who is the goddess of the hunt um, and wild animals. And she has a twin brother who is named Apollo and he is the god of light. And then there is Athena, the goddess of wisdom, protector of cities. And there is Hermes, the messenger to the god and the god of the market. And there's Ares, the god of the war, and Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. Wasn't Hestia also the goddess of the hearth? Yes, she was. This is kind of an overview of um, all the things that these guys were gods and goddesses of. Um, and so I don't have all the details on there. That's good. And Apollo, the god of music. Aphrodite. Da, 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 da. Okay. Now, um, so let's start talking about Greek art. So there was a lot of different types of Greek art that was made. There was the statues, which is, I just showed you some, those are ancient Greek and Roman statues. Um, and they were made out of marble. Um, there was paintings at this time. There was really cool, um, they're called mosaics, where they would use small little tiles and make pictures with that. And we're actually gonna do that um, in my class later this week. We're gonna do Roman art and we're gonna learn more about mosaics. So if you wanna come to that, that'd be really fun. I'd love to have you guys back with me. And there um, was pottery. And pottery is really interesting. Um, have you guys ever played telephone? Are you guys familiar with the game telephone where you sit in a circle and you whisper something to your neighbor and then that story has to go all the way around the circle and then come back to you? Um, and then it's always kind of funny to see uh, what the story turned into. Um, and so the Greeks, what they did is they kind of came up with um, stories about the world and the gods and how they were created and where they came from. And then they would tell it to someone and then that someone would tell it to somebody else. And these stories would travel around the, the country of Greece and the, the world maybe. And they would kind of change a little bit every time. And the artist kind of took creative freedom too and would take the story and sometimes put their own spin on it, which would then maybe create a different meaning of the story or it would change the story slightly. So what we know about the Greek gods and goddesses is from these stories. And a lot of time the stories would get bigger and bigger until they seemed so crazy and so wild that how could this possibly be real? And so then we think of the stories more as myths um, because they're so crazy. Um, and so the mythology was passed around in stories like that and people would sing songs about them and there's books written about them, poems written about them. But another way that these stories were written down um, is through picture stories. And one of the things that they used to tell these stories was pottery. And the interesting thing about the pottery too is everybody had pots in their homes. They had pots that they used for you know everyday things like drinking water or storing food um, and they had pots that they used in their houses for decorations and that they had for like special like you might have special holiday decorations in your house that you only bring out once a year um, to use for one special thing or maybe your parents have a special set of plates and dishes that they only bring out for the holidays um, so they had dishes that were special and ceremonial like that or pots that were special and ceremonial like that. They also had a type of vase that they used as a grave marker. So rather than having like a headstone like we do in graveyards these days, um, they would use a pot for something like that. And pottery um, varied in price, like the simple pottery uh, was probably, you know, pretty pretty cheap, pretty normal pricing. Um, everybody had it. And 
whenever the country of Greece was kind of falling and the government was falling apart and um, history was changing, there was a lot of pillaging and other armies coming in and stealing all their stuff and taking it. And pottery wasn't super duper valuable to them because everybody had it. It wasn't like jewelry or gold or marble statues. Um, so the pottery didn't get stolen. So it's one of the things that we have um, from this time period that we can learn a lot about the stories that happened. In fact, there's over a hundred thousand um, Greek pots and vases in museums around the world. Um, and so there's a lot of stories recorded on these. And this particular pot that you're looking at right here, a vase, um, it is a story of Theseus and Antipi. Um, I always say that a little funny. Um, so Antipi was the queen of the Amazons. And the Amazons was a race of people that we don't know if it was real or not, um, but they appeared in Greek mythology a lot and their stories a lot. So this is a story about Theseus and Antipi and the way that the myth is told, there's a couple different versions of it. And one of them is that Antipi fell in love with Theseus and they ran away back to Greece. The other one is that Theseus kind of stole Antipi, who was the queen of the Amazons. And so either way, the, the Amazons weren't super happy that their queen was stolen away or that ran away. And so they came to fight and get her back. Um, so if you look at this pot, uh, the two people kind of in the middle that are holding a big big shields and they kind of have uh, leaves on them and those leaves are called laurels and the Greeks used laurels a lot to represent themselves. So the standing person, that's Theseus, and the person who's kind of on the ground who looks like maybe he's not doing so well in this battle, um, that's another Greek soldier, but we don't really know who he is. And the idea or the thought behind this particular picture is that Antipi is on the horse. Um, and you can tell her apart as well as the other Amazons apart because they have this like pattern on them. It's kind of like this zigzaggy, like she's wearing this like scarf that's kind of got like a checkerboardy thing. And the other two, um, there's two people on the right hand side that kind of look like they're wearing like leggings that are like zigzaggy leggings. Um, I'm sure they didn't wear leggings back then, but that's what it kind of looks like. So those are Amazon um, warriors. And so there's this story happening here of this battle. Um, I see a couple of people raised your hand. That's fine. Um, if you would like to ask a question though, go ahead and throw it in the Q&A and I'll see if I can answer it. Um, uh, are the Amazons you talked about the same Amazons as the ones in the movie of Wonder Woman? That's a really good question. So the story of Wonder Woman is made up, um, but it is based in this mythology a bit. So potentially um, this is, um, like I said, kind of like a made up race of people. So maybe I think they're kind of based in the same mythology. Um, uh, yeah, so, but it was like this island filled with these warrior women. So it kind of sounds very similar. So I think there's definitely a parallel there. Okay, so that's, that's the story that's told on this pot. And up in the top of the pot, there's a whole other part of the story being told. And then there's, so it's kind of like chapters. The top there is one chapter of the story. And then the bottom part of the story is a bigger picture. And that's a whole other chapter of the story, but it's all kind of the same book, I guess, but painted in pictures on this pot. So let's go. And so then there's other things too that they would paint. Um, this is a, a vase with a pegasus on it. It's a magical creature that they believe existed, a winged horse that could fly. And um, so sometimes the stories were a little bit more simple. And 
over here is three Greek runners running. And that's the whole story. And there's not a lot um, more story there to understand from this pot. And I want you to start paying attention to, there's lots of like little flower patterns or um, decorative designs that they put on a lot of their pottery. Um, and also kind of start paying attention to the colors that they're using. So they didn't have a lot of um, colors that they could use. They had black, they had red, and they kind of had the brown yellowy clay color. Um, and they also figured out how to make white. So they didn't have a lot of different colors in their, their arsenal to use. So let's see this next story. Okay, so this next story is Achilles and Penthesilea. And this is another um, interesting story. So in the Greek mythology, uh, Penthesilea was another queen of the Amazons, and she was well respected for her bravery and her skill with weapons and wisdom. And she led an army of Amazons the, to Troy to fight against the Greeks. And the, the way the mythology is told is that she uh, killed Achilles, um, but Zeus brought Achilles back to life, and then Achilles killed her. So um, this is uh, the story here, I'm guessing, of Achilles killing her. So it's kind of brutal. Um, but again, you can see that Penthesilea has kind of that same pattern on that uh, the Amazon warriors had in that earlier one. She's kind of wearing this dress that's kind of got a pattern on it. Um, and so you kind of start to be able to read and understand uh, the how they communicated about different characters and figures in the stories. All right, so I've got another one here. So this one is of Hercules, and he had these 12 labors that he had to go and um, complete. And one of them was to defeat this Neiman lion. And this lion was like bulletproof, sword proof. I mean, they didn't have bullets, but you couldn't penetrate him with like a sword. So he had to wrestle this lion um, to death basically was his challenge. And um, the only way he could do it was by wrestling. So this is a picture of that story. And if you look at this picture, you see that again, they kind of have the, the borders and the lines of different colors and the simple color palette of um, just kind of the yellow brown color of the clay there's kind of some red, and then there's black that they used um, to decorate this pot. And then here's a bunch of different others. Um, so here you can kind of see some of these pots here have a lot of patterns and a lot of just decorations um, and not so much about the storytelling. Um, and a simpler pot that doesn't have so much detail and storytelling um, might be something for more everyday use like the one with the swirls on it might be more everyday use versus the ones with all of the stories um, might be a bit more valuable and something that you would wanna show off um, to your, like, your friends that come over, oh, check out this cool vase that I have. Um, so here's a couple different examples of that, okay? So next I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how they made Greek pottery. So um, what they did is they went and they dug the clay out of the ground and they liked to find clay that had a heavy um, concentration of iron in it, so the metal iron, because whenever they uh, cooked those pots and um, finished them, that iron color would turn black. Um, so what they did is they went and they dug up some clay and then they had this whole um, process where they would refine the clay and kind of get out all the big rocks and seashells and whatever else might be in the clay when they dug it out of the ground. And they would kind of sift it and filter it until they had just a really fine 
smooth um, clay uh, that they could use to make their pots because they kind of needed it to be a nice um, fine texture. They didn't want to have a bunch of rocks in their pottery that would cause their pots to break and not be very strong. So if you look down in the bottom left of this picture, you can see it's called a levigation or grading of pigment as the actual technical word for it. But this is kind of a diagram of how they would take the clay and clean it until it was uh, fine enough that they could use it. And then they didn't have uh, electricity, but they did use a pottery wheel just like we do. Like we have a pottery wheel here at our school in our ceramic studio that the students get to use and make all kinds of really cool things. But those pottery wheels um, obviously run on electricity because we live in 2020. Um, these pottery wheels, they had a few different types. They had one that they could control with their feet. So you see that one guy over there and he's spinning it around with his feet. Um, they had another kind of tabletop one uh, where they could spin it that way. Um, so it was a little bit more of a manual process and you had to be like skilled in making the pottery wheel work as well as um, knowing how to make pottery. So then after you had your um, clay cleaned and you would knead it together until it was a really good texture to make into a pot, um, these days you can just buy clay at an art store, um, but they had to make their own. They didn't have art stores like we do. And then they would make their pots and then they would make their drawings on their pots. So they would use, like I said, they would pick different kinds of clay that whenever they cooked it, it would come out of different colors. And then they would paint their design on with the clay and they'd use these little sharp tools to draw and carve in the details on their pots. And they would carefully scratch in really intricate designs and it make really beautiful stories. Um, or just patterns. And then they would put it in what is called a kiln. And these are just some examples of some, what a kiln might have looked like. Um, and they would get it really, really hot in there with the fire underneath. And they would cook all the pots until the clay had cured and into like a nice hard ceramic surface that was durable and would hold water. Um, and that's how they made their pots. Um, let's see, so let's now look. So here is a bunch of different Greek patterns on the left. So there's a lot of different uh, stripes and things that they would use over and over again. The one that kind of looks like little mazes, that's called a meandering pattern. Um, they had patterns that looked kind of like clouds or water. So if there was a boat or something, there might be a water pattern underneath it. Or if they were making a picture of a god, they might put them on top of a cloud-like pattern so that you understand that this is a Greek god or goddess and they are, you know, above us all um, on Mount Olympus or something. Um, and then they would tell stories and they would make pictures. And so now we are going to start by doing that. So I'm gonna come back to this picture in just a second. Um, but first I want to just show you kind of how I start working on some project like this. And then we'll come back to this picture so you can look at all these different patterns and kind of get some ideas of how to make your own pot. And then we're gonna take the rest of this class really to, um, work on making our own pots based off of the Greek pottery and we're going to tell our own stories and um, hopefully come up with some really cool designs. Um, let's see, so I'm going to come back to the picture of me. Hi, hello again. So I've got um, a piece of paper here and this is my piece of paper. So what I am going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. And I want to make a nice tall base. So I am folding my paper in half. Um, 
lengthwise because I want mine to be tall. You might want to fold yours in half crosswise. Um, totally up to you though. So I'm going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw my pot, but I'm going to draw half of it. So I'm going to draw half of it and I'm going to draw it on this side. And I want to have a really uh, tall vase is what I'm going to start with. So I am going to draw kind of like a half of an oval here at the top. Um, fill it in. Got a nice big fat marker so I can hope, hope you can see kind of what I'm drawing today. Okay, so there's kind of a half oval that I'm going to do on the top. And then I'm going to kind of bring it in because my vase, I want it to have a neck. But again, I'm going to go back to that picture in just a second. And then I'm going to make it a nice kind of amphora vase shape. I'm going to bring it all the way down. I'm going to give it a kind of skinny vase. And then a nice wide platform to stand on. Okay, and then I'm going to give it a handle. And again, you guys get to choose whatever shape of vase you want to do. You can do the same one, or you can pick a different one, or you can make up your own vase. The beauty of drawing, rather than doing it on the pottery wheel, is uh, we get to make it however we want. It doesn't have to be structurally sound. So now I'm going to flip my paper over, and I am going to uh, copy this shape of vase that I made. So this way I can have a nice symmetrical shaped vase. Um, and if you just want to freestyle, draw your vase on there and you don't worry about it being symmetrical, that is totally fine and up to you. You are the artist. You are the Greek potter now. And we are just doing a study in Greek pottery. Here's, all right, so now I draw the other side, I draw my handle. So now if I open this up, I have a nice pot. I'm just gonna connect my lines a little better. There we go. So there we go. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to start planning out my pot. I think I'm going to do some like stripes up here. I'm going to put some patterns. I think I'm going to make a picture of Athena here in the middle. Um, and then I am going to draw some kind of florally shapes, I think is what I'm going to do. But now I'm going to bring it back to that slide like I promised. And you can go ahead and start designing your own pot. And um, put in the Q&A if you have any questions. If not, that's totally fine. We're just going to, you know, start making some art. We've got about uh, 15 minutes before this class is over. So we're just gonna draw together. And if you wanna send me pictures of your pot, pottery afterwards, you can email it to events at delphian.org is an email you can send it to. Um, or you can send it in a message to our Facebook account or the Delphian School Facebook account or the Delphian School Instagram account. Um, and they will get to me as well. I love to see your pottery. Um, if you don't like your first attempt, that's fine. Go ahead and try it again and try it again and again. Um, no artist um, starts being an expert. You have to practice, practice, practice. And that's, um, I'm always practicing and it's, it's a lot of fun to learn a new technique. So this is a new technique. Don't expect to be perfect the first time. Um, or maybe your first attempt will be great. Um, yeah, you can just design, you can make a nice pattern. You don't have to have stories. There was bases where they, um, didn't have any 
any pictures on them. They were just like leaves or patterns and they were just beautiful that way. Um, you can do it with a picture if you want. I kind of included some fun pictures over here. Some of these are Greek, some of them aren't. I liked the, the mythical creatures. There's a dragon, there's a unicorn, uh, there's a troll, a fairy, whatever you want to draw. You don't have to have a figure on there. You don't have to tell a story. You can just um, have patterns and designs too. That's fine. And you can make as many as you want. Um, you can make 10 in the time that we're going if you want to. Um, you do not have to uh, get yourself into a mold or a form. We're just studying Greek art and just playing around with some new ideas and new techniques and learning a new skill. But I am going to do a, um, a picture of the warrior goddess Athena. I think she's just kind of really cool. Uh, she kind of reminds me of Wonder Woman. Um, she's just a really cool goddess. She's also really wise. A lot of times when there's pictures of Athena, she will have an owl with her. All right, so I'm gonna draw. I'm just gonna put her in the middle of my pot. I think next time I should get maybe a little bit of background music. Maybe you're listening to background music at home while you're drawing. So if you have any questions at this time, it'd be totally fine to throw them in the Q&A or if you're just busy drawing, that's kind of, kind of perfect. I used to live in California before I moved up here and I would go to the museum called the Getty down there and it's one of my favorite museums that I've ever been to. And if you ever are in Southern California in the Los Angeles area and you can make it out to the Getty it is a really cool museum to go to because they have a lot of Greek and Roman and other ancient art there that you can see in real life. And some of the statues are just massive. They're just really cool. really cool to look at in real life. And sometimes when I would go, I would bring a sketchbook with me. I would just sit on the benches, and just kind of draw them and just try and pay attention to how their clothing looked. And I would just practice, practice, practice. And um, the Getty is also right near the ocean. So it's just kind of a peaceful, pretty place to go Go and draw and maybe, maybe when we're allowed to get out and get around again and 
museums open back up, it's going to be fun thing to do. Go to the go to these museums and see what kind of artwork there are. Bring your sketchbook and and draw. You go. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the ways to practice art is just by looking at really good art and just learning from them. Like, how did they make that? How did they do that? And just practicing and drawing it once, drawing it twice, drawing it 300 times. I read something once that it takes like 10,000 hours to get like really, really good and professional at something. So don't expect to get there on your first try. But keep trying. Keep, keep learning. Buy books on it. You can take more art classes. But really what is going to make you a good artist is practice and dedication to practice. We have a really pretty art studio here. And I don't know if I've told you guys, I think I told you in a different class where um, I used to be a student here and I graduated high school from here. And um, it's one of my favorite places to just draw because it's right next to the forest and there's just a lot of really beautiful natural light that you get when you're drawing in there and I feel like some places you go to are just a really creative spaces they're really nice to just draw and create And funny thing is we have the pottery studio, but I've never actually used it. I've never done pottery before, but I've drawn bases like this before. I've never actually um, used clay on a pottery wheel in the pottery studio. And you know what, maybe I should go do that. Maybe I should learn to do that this weekend. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, got a few minutes left. I'm gonna keep working on my pot. Kind of drew my design in pencil. I'm filling it in now with marker. And then I'm gonna go back after I fill it in with marker and any of my pencil that is left behind. I am going to erase it out. It's a little trick I learned once. Because pencil you can obviously erase and try again and again and again. So you draw your first design in pencil and then you go back over it with marker when you like it. Um, Aubrey says she is all done. Awesome. Love to see what you did. If you want to go ahead and send it in that email. It was, again, it was events at delphian.org. 
and um, we love seeing what you guys make. Um, maybe we could make a little, get them to make us a album on social media and we can see what everybody is drawing. It's kind of fun to see all the different ideas that everyone has. Okay. Well, I have finished drawing my Athena. I'm going to go back in and erase my pencil marks. some different patterns up here. What do I, do I want to do? That's kind of a fun one. I'm going to do, now since she is a goddess, I am going to put a kind of cloud-like pattern underneath her feet. So that she, so that everyone knows that she is a goddess. zigzaggy pattern up here on the top. I think that would make a good So I'm not done. I've still got more art or pattern I wanted to draw on here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you so far what I've done. Um, I will switch it back to this picture for you to look at for the rest of the class. And um, you can keep coloring, you can keep coloring at home. You can make more art. Um, there's my Athena, my warrior woman. Um, and I kind of did the meandering pattern there, and then I put some clouds kind of underneath there so you know she's a goddess. And that is what I'm working on. I'm kind of going to do some swirls around here too. kind of want her to look like she's up in the clouds, and these are kind of clouds. And I'm going to put some more patterns here. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I'm going to keep working. And then I am going to, um, I'll give this to the person who runs our social media too. Maybe they can make a, an album with my piece and all the art that you guys send in. Uh, events at delphian.org is the email. This was really fun. And I will be doing Roman um, art on Thursday. And we'll be doing uh, ceramic um, art with that and it's going to be a kind of a totally different class so I look forward to seeing you then so till then bye guys <laughs>